피해자분들과 피해자 가족들께 죄송합니다. 왜 어린이 학생들 같은 거? 네, 죄송합니다. 비가 얼굴 공개했는데 신경 안 쓰시. 후회스럽고 죄송스럽. 저에게 피해를 입은 모든 분들께 진심으로 사죄의 말씀을 드립니다. 멈출 수 없었던 악마의 삶을 멈춰 주셔서 정말 감사합니다. 
In other cases, they are forced to hurt themselves physically, like carving slave into their bodies, inserting objects into themselves, even being essayed by certain members of these rooms. Some victims were tricked into giving perpetrators their personal details like their bank information, and then they were blackmailed into obeying the chat user's depraved whims. Something that really made the Nth Room case particularly disturbing was the vast network of participants. The number of participants was shocking. Police estimate that around 260,000 people had accessed and joined these chat rooms at various points. The sheer number of males who were willing to watch and also torment innocent women and girls highlights the scale of the normalization of dehumanizing women and girls and the demand for such deranged and illegal content. The Nth Room operators used various technologies to maintain their anonymity and evade detection. Cryptocurrency, particularly Bitcoin, was used for payments, making transactions difficult to trace. The use of Telegram, known for its encryption features, also provided a layer of secrecy. This case highlighted the double-edged nature of technology, while encryption and anonymity tools can protect privacy and freedom of speech, they can also be used and exploited by criminals to hide their activities. As the rooms began to be shared in more male online communities, one man went to the police and reported the rooms. Unfortunately, they didn't find his claims credible and ignored him. The first people to really begin investigating the Nth Room case were two female students in July of 2019. And in August of the same year, the Electronic Times was the first media outlet to report on the case. This took the nation by storm as the South Korean public learned of these awful crimes. The watchman, who was known as the person who made the Nth Rooms popular, was arrested in September of 2019. He was a 38-year-old company worker who had received a suspended sentence for pornography distribution in the past. God God once declared that he would never be caught by police, since he never used his own phone and his crypto was untraceable since he transferred to gift cards. Fortunately, he was wrong. He was found, arrested, and charged in May of 2020. Police discovered that he had a long history of troubling crimes. Since 2017, he had lured both young women and girls by promising them high-paying jobs before coercing them into pornography. He even pretended to be a police officer once, investigating pornography, in order to hack accounts of women who had posted explicit content. With the footage he obtained, he blackmailed the women, even threatening to send clips to their parents if they didn't send him additional content. Moon Hyung Wuk, under the nickname God God, shared at least 3,800 illegal clips in the Nth Rooms, and prosecutors rightly demanded that Moon be sentenced to life. But, unfortunately, he was only given 34 years in prison. The leader of the ring, the doctor, Cho Ju Bin, was also arrested and charged in May of 2020. He received just 45 years in prison. And finally, Butta, Kang Hoon, the minor, was also arrested and charged. While minor offenders are not typically exposed in Korea, the severity of his crimes led the police to decide that the public had the right to know his identity, since he played Cho Ju Bin's right hand man. Kang Hoon was the first underage offender to be exposed to the public and he was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Police were also able to identify 1,100 victims. They collaborated with cryptocurrency companies, and they were able to also link 3,757 people to the Nth Rooms and arrested them. But only 245 were ever imprisoned. This means that hundreds of thousands of XY who were in these rooms got away with their crimes, since apparently police couldn't track them. Of course, to me that's a bit hard to believe since technically everyone is pretty trackable through their user login ID, their IP address, or at least the cryptocurrency exchanges where they purchase their Bitcoin. Regardless, that's where the punishments end for this case, unfortunately. After this crime ring was busted, South Korea's National Assembly passed the Nth Room Prevention Act, which will increase the legal maximum sentence for blackmailing based on explicit content. The government also now requires online community portals that generate significant annual revenue to check for illegal footage in the chat rooms. However, this law doesn't affect Telegram because its servers are not run in Korea. It's been said that videos and photos from the Nth Rooms are now being sold on foreign messaging platforms and on the deep web. Modern males love to say not all men, but somehow it's always a man. And in this case, there were hundreds of thousands. I mean, thank goodness for that one guy who tried to go to the police and report the rooms early on. 
but that's one male out of so, so many who saw what was happening and chose to remain silent or, worse, participated. And they're still out there, living their lives, being brothers and fathers and friends, while hurting women and girls secretly through the internet. In peace, I might add, because police left them alone. And because corn is such an addiction for so many males, I have no doubt that they're somewhere else on the internet right now, engaging in the same activities. I mean, there are new nth rooms going on as we speak. I'll bet anyone you can find at least half those males from the original rooms in the new ones. And not only that, it's been said that 1 in 100 South Korean men were involved in the nth rooms, which is an extremely disturbing number when you think about it too hard. Like, it suddenly makes sense why most of the nth room users allegedly couldn't be found. Maybe investigators simply didn't want to find them, if you catch my drift. This is why women say it's all men until it's no man. To this day, the story of the nth room crime ring deeply disturbs me. I think of all the innocent victims, many who were just job hunting when they were targeted and victimized. I think of the minors who must be traumatized from this experience to this day. I found out that there's a quote from one survivor. She said, I developed bipolar disorder and depression. I felt like I was being stalked. I couldn't let anyone recognize me. So I bundled up my whole face and body whenever I went outside, even in the summer. It drives me nuts thinking that I could wake up to tens of thousands of messages the next morning with my videos spread all over social media. Hearing that was so heartbreaking, and I have no doubt that many other children who were targeted in those rooms feel the same way. Yet, we'll never know their stories. I just hope that they recover and heal someday, knowing that it wasn't their fault. I'm disgusted thinking of how young most of the perpetrators were when they first started these rooms and began exploiting women and girls. Based on the depravity and the severity of these crimes, you kind of expect this behavior from older males, maybe the 40-year-old creep in his parents' dingy basement. You don't expect it from the college and even the high school-aged males, but inceldom and toxic patriarchal ideals that dehumanize half the population has no age. If you want to know the entire story in depth, Check out the documentary Cyber Hell on Netflix. It's a heavy watch, but it explains everything really well. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and share for more.